all the industry has to do is turn to a government or turn to somebody like me and say, would you comment? Um, the, the problem is solvable, but to answer your question, sir, uh, it's really the modulation or the pulse frequency, the carrier waves that they put in that tend to do most of the damage. All right, Eric, interesting questions. Thank you. And um, here's, here's another one, Temba, asking this question. What are the effects of microwaves when using Bluetooth in the car, which many of us do, and, and or when the Bluetooth device is actually on your person? Two questions there, ma'am. Uh, the first, you should never, ever use a microwave transmitter inside a car because they reflect all of the microwaves backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, and you are effectively putting yourself into a microwave oven. That is the first thing. The other thing is that we know from experiments, and this has been published, that when you have microwaves near your brain, we know that it was carried out on children, and a child who used a microwave transmitter, an ordinary cell phone, for two minutes had his natural brain waves disrupted for two hours afterwards. Now, when you disrupt your natural brain waves, it's called entrainment, any personality change, depending which part of the brain you're, tra- you're changing, any personality change can occur, and, and that's just with two minutes. So if you have children in your car or you are using a Bluetooth near your brain, you are effectively entraining your brain. Now, if you're using your Bluetooth for several minutes, then the chances are your brain will be entrained for many, many, many hours. And if you use a mobile phone and Bluetooth, a mobile phone and Bluetooth on and off through the day, then your brain will not actually function properly and you you could experience all sorts of neurological funny feelings uh, and and i'm afraid that this is was the basis of of my my spy training this is what they were used for and uh, lots more questions coming from from listeners and uh, i've also got some more questions and if you've just tuned in we're chatting to barry Trow, a retired british military intelligence scientist and uh, he's here to answer your questions he's out here as a guest of the electromagnetic radiation research foundation of south africa and i'll give you details of the talk uh, that he is going to be giving that's a talk a public presentation this evening at 7 p.m but i'll give you those uh, those details a little bit later on. Talk Radio 702. We're talking 2010 on 011 883 0702. All right, we're going to run out of time, but but let's see how we how we go. Is there a minimum amount of texting that is safe for girls? Uh, I, I, the question is too hard for me to answer. It, it, it's, it, the question really is like, is there a minimum amount of cigarettes a child could smoke and stay safe? Uh, there are so many complicated uh, issues here. A girl may just text once, send the microwave straight through her ovaries and cause genetic damage, or she may text for a month and have no specific issues. So you just can't say? It, it's the, 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 the question is too hard to answer. You were saying to me a moment ago whilst we were off air that um, if a child uses a cell phone once a year, it's, it's, it's once too many. Is that not being too rigid, too melodramatic? My own government has said that children should only use cell phones in a life and death emergency. Some countries, I believe Russia, actually ban children from using cell phones. But if we stick to the life and death emergency, if a child says to me, I've used my cell phone once a year, I would say, well, you have a a pretty rough life to have an emergency like that every year. A a child should not use a cell phone only in a life and death emergency. Uh, And there are other medical issues that I don't have time to go through to do with the immune system and the development of the nerves. But... um, a child should not use a cell phone unless it is a life and death situation. And it should not, emphatically, uh, the mask should not be sighted in a school ground. W- absolutely not, without a shadow of a doubt. Let's uh, see if we can answer this uh, question from Moira. Hi there, Moira. 
Hi. Um, hi, Barry. And Good Jess. afternoon, ma'am. Um, my question is, do satellite dishes emit um, microwave radiation? And I'm not talking about the sort of home TV satellites. I'm talking about these 50-meter diameter satellite dishes. And the reason I ask is that I have a, a factory next door to an area that's um, like a satellite farm. And I've been working there for 15 years, and my health has deteriorated to the point where I, I can't even work anymore with neurological problems and various health problems. The easy answer to your question, ma'am, is yes, they can. Um, and is it the microwaves that, that are the problem? Because these are satellites that I believe some of them track um, satellites um, orbiting the earth and um, two that are located about 10 meters from my factory are at least 50 meter diameter. If they're tracking satellites orbiting the earth, mm -hmm. um, it, it, to be honest, it, it depends what the dish is there for mm -hmm. and what it's doing. If it's tracking a satellite, then nothing should be coming your way. Mm -hmm. If it is tracking a satellite, picking up information and forwarding it to a cell tower... Yes. That's or, what it does. Or receive yeah. from a cell tower. If it's receiving from satellites and forwarding it to a cell tower, that is uh, generally sort of in the form of a beam. And if you are in, in, in the way of that boom, beam, then you are absolutely correct, ma'am. That could be the explanation of your illness without a shadow of a doubt. And um, can it cause things like um, clinical depression and neurological problems? I've... I've lost okay, Maura, I, I can't be too oh, okay. explicit about that, but Barry will answer that question. Thanks. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Barry, you'll stay for a few minutes after the news? Of course. Fantastic. That'd be absolutely lovely. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. We've got lots and lots of interesting questions coming our way, including uh, the use of Wi-Fi, which, of course, affects so many South Africans and so many people all around the world, in your house, in your car, and uh, and in your office as well. So let's talk about that and possibly ways to, to combat that. Let me slip in a question to Barry before the news, and he'll stay for about 10 minutes after the news and hopefully get through all of your questions. Uh, Barry, just a, 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 quick, a quick question. Is it safer not to keep your cell phone next to your bed when you go to, to sleep at night? Oh, absolutely. Uh, what happens, if you have your cell phone next to your bed, it is emitting microwaves if it's on standby. The microwaves go into the body and they influence a chemical known as melatonin. The melatonin goes around the body at night, mopping up cancer cells that, that we can produce every day. So if your cell phone is on uh, beside your bed when you are sleeping, which is the most dangerous time of the day, when you wake up, your immune system can be 40% less effective than when you went to bed. Really? Absolutely. So you've got, if you switch off that cell phone, not put it on silent, but if you switch it off... Presumably, then, it's okay because it's switched off. Yes. Same with television sets in the bedroom. Absolutely. Same with anything that is electronic. Yes. Goodness. Okay, so there you go. There's some uh, quick answers uh, to some questions, but we'll take some of your other questions after the news. Stay with us. I think it's a vital conversation. I think it's an important conversation. And uh, just some information that, that Barry has given me, that in Taiwan, 1,700 schools have actually taken out um, Wi-Fi. I think that's, I think that's, uh, what, what we were talking about. Um, they've actually got rid of it altogether. Very, very interesting. And, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit after the news. So please stay with us talking to Barry Trower. You're listening to Jenny Cruis Williams on Talk Radio 702.